Welcome to another video tutorial. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to set up a first person uh, perspective, whether it be a shooter or whatever type of game you're going for. I'm going to cover how to set up first person view, how to set up a view model, that would be the arms, weapons, that sort of thing, and how uh, to equip things using the view model system. Okay, so three things we're going to cover in this video and hopefully this should be a good starting point to get your first person shooters set up. Now I say shooter but in the case of this I'm going to use um, a sword so it's going to be a bit more like Skyrim or something like that but it's going to be first person and it's going to set up the camera, the view model and how to equip weapons using the view model system. Okay so let's start with how do you make a first person game? How do you even start with that because typically by default RPG in a box is a third person game. So what you want to do is you want to go up to where it says game configuration and you want to open this up and you want to go to the gameplay section and where it says camera type you want to change it from standard to first person. Okay the next option down the view model is where we're going to set up the arms for our character which we'll get to in a second. But the next important thing to talk about right now is the field of view. You'll want to change this if you want to uh, have the cam, the, the sort of perspective of your character when you're looking out of the eyes of your character. If you want it to be more zoomed out or zoomed in, this would be where you would change that. So I'm going to leave it at 60 for, um, for the case of this uh, tutorial. You can allow mouse look, which means you can use the mouse to look around. And uh, I'm not sure what, oh, you can, yeah, limit the mouse look so you can only look in certain angles. So you wouldn't be able to do a complete 180, for example, or 360, whatever. You get the idea. You wouldn't be able to completely spin around with the mouse. You wouldn't be able to completely look up. You can lock it to certain degrees. We'll keep that off. We won't limit the, uh, we'll have full range of mouse look. So if we now save and play the game, this should now just already be a first person perspective. Not particularly exciting because there's not much going on with the look of the character or anything, but we can see we can look around and walk around in first person. So we've already effectively turned our third person game into a first person game just with a couple of options. But now let's jazz it up a bit and let's create what's called a view model. So the view model can be where some people can get quite uh, confused about how to do this. So I'm going to try and explain this as easily as I can. And hopefully just by seeing the process, it should also help uh, make this hopefully make some sense. So some things to understand about uh, the difference between view model and player model. So at the moment, if we go to the game configuration, go to the general, we have a player character. OK, you set this player character here. This would be um, a representation of your character. So in my case, I'm using base Justin. So my player character would look like that if I saw it from a third person perspective. But obviously now we're playing from first person perspective. So the camera pretty much goes straight to the eye line of this character. Separate to that, you have the view model which is a second secondary character which you create for the first person camera type okay so if we take a look at the justin model this is our sort of player character okay we'll come back to talking about the difference between the player character and the view model a bit later on when we talk about equipping and attaching weapons. But for now, just in regards to how it relates to the view model, what I want to point out is this preset down here. So you've got presets for how you look at models in the voxel editor. So we can look at the back and we're now looking at the back of the character. So this is the back of his head. This is the back of his shirt. We can look at the front of the character. It might help if I gave the character some eyes. So let me just quickly paint some green eyes or something in. Okay, so we're now looking front on to the uh, character. So we're looking into his eyes, his face on with the character. And if we select back, we're now looking at the back of the character. 
and then left we're looking to the left of the character and right we're looking to the right etc etc and you've got top and you've got bottom okay so it's important to understand that there's a, there's a distinct difference between a player model or a character model and a view model okay which we're going to set up now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click the new resource button and a view model needs to be a character it can't be an object otherwise it won't appear in the view model drop down list so ensure that you make a character model and i'm going to call this um i'll just call it v model and we can it doesn't matter the grid dimensions uh, but i'm not going to make it 24 high so i'll just make it a cube oops he says gonna make it a cube so here's our view model okay so when you create a model by default you're looking at the front uh, from the front perspective okay now this far wall at the back let me fill it in this far wall at the back is what I'm going to refer to as the front rear wall or something like that it's just it's it's when you're looking from the front it's the wall at the back okay the reason I put this wall in is just to show you that we need to build towards that wall okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the voxel uh, models and I'm going to select a color for the sleeve of the arm for my character so let's just have a have him wear a green shirt or something so what you want to do is you want to create your model as it would appear as your arms in the game when you're in first person so I'm just going to create just a simple line of voxels for an arm and then a single voxel for the hand okay and you could obviously duplicate that over to the other side and you could have you know two arms but for now I'm just going to use one arm it doesn't really matter okay let's now delete this wall because that was just there to show you the direction in which we're making these things okay so remember we we want this to be when we're looking from the front the arm needs to be going away because and if i haven't explained this i don't think, don't think i have so i should explain it now when you are looking from the front this or these camera um angle presets here they always refer to the eyes of you the viewer okay so currently i the viewer i.e slayer in this case i am looking at the front of this model okay so my my eyes are going in in this direction i'm looking out past base justin to the back wall at the back here okay so the, the, i'm looking at the front of this character so it's almost like i'm standing in front of base justin okay now, if I was truly standing in front of base Justin, then my arms would also be going in this direction. Yeah, My fist would be furthest away from my shoulder because that's how your arm works, right? So from this perspective, the hand is the furthest thing away from the camera perspective. It's going towards this back plane here, okay? Just like if I was looking at base Justin, he's right in front of me right so when you make a view model you're you've got to understand that the front is the angle of which you want to be building your models from so if you're building your model from the back it's going to be the wrong direction if i was to rotate this model and do that then in game it would be back to front the fit i would be the fist would be connected to my shoulder and the arm would be going out the wrong way so now if we look at it from the front you can see that in game that would look wrong because the fist would be facing me and the shoulder bit would be furthest away so we need it to look like from the front when this is set to front it needs to be set so that the fist or the hand or whatever is the furthest away from the camera okay and as i say if you wanted to do another arm you could very easily select it copy paste and then just move it and then you've got two arms i'm not going to bother with that i'm just going to equip one item into this hand what i'm also going to do though is i'm going to slightly raise it up just so it's a bit more 
um, got a bit more height to it. So that's the first thing is you want to set your preset to front and then build out your model going in this direction, going outwards from this direction. Obviously you can, you know, rotate the camera to, to build it out, but you just have to remember that you're building out in this direction so that when you are set to front, it's going in the right direction. Okay. So that makes sense. I want to make sure that's sunk in before we move any further. Okay. So the next thing we need is an attach point, which tells the view model where the camera is in relation to all of this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the attach point option and we'll just click down here on the ground in the center and we'll call this camera. It has to be called camera. So you want to call this attach point camera. Then we'll go to the model properties. We'll scroll down to the camera attach point and we'll just bring it up a bit. And then what I'm going to do is bring it back towards. So it's, so if you look again from the front perspective, I'm bringing this attach point closer to the view, closer to my eyes. Okay. So I'm, so I'm bringing this cam, this, um, attach point closer to me like that. It needs to be coming towards you. Okay. It almost needs to be touching this back wall. Ideally, it doesn't have to, but you know, that would give you one of the, you know, the best views. Now, what you'll find with this, and you'll probably see this when I play test in a minute, is that sometimes you have to sort of go back and forth between the voxel editor and your game, repositioning the attach point, repositioning the arm, just to make sure it's the right height and the right distance to how you want it. So let's give this a test in a second. Let's just, um, I'm going to bring the attack, the attach point slightly forward though, because I don't want to see all of the arm. I want it to sort of cut off at the shoulder. So let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to save this now. This is my V model model. So I now need to go to game configuration and where it says view model, drop this down and select V model. So now if we click OK and play the game, not only will we be in first person, but we should see at least some of this arm. Let's see what happens. Let's save everything. So here we are in game and you can see that the arm is a bit too far to the side. It's also a bit too high, but we can, you can see it, right? And it's facing the right way. So we, we're already on the right track, but we just need to make some adjustments to the model and possibly the attach point. I'll probably just move the model around, to be honest. So we'll go back into the editor. And as I say, this can be a bit of back and forth. It is the sort of the more tedious part of doing a view model. But once you kind of know what you need to do, you can you know, position it yourself, really. So, deselect everything for a second. Select the model. So let's bring it closer to the attach point and bring it down a bit. And let's just see what that looks like. And if needs be, I'll, I'll move the attach point back. That's pretty good. That is almost, in fact, that's probably good enough for the tutorial. So you can see within a couple of um, adjustments, I've got it to where I'm happy with it. You could move the arm slightly forward a bit if you want to see a bit more of the, the arm. Or if you wanted a more tighter field of view, you could bring the model back a bit. Or you can adjust, of course, the actual field of view setting. So we could go to game configuration and you can adjust this. The bigger the number, the more of the arm you're going to see. So let's uh, play that again. You'll see that it's it looks like a sort of zoomed out perspective. So now it looks like a really stretched arm. So you'll want to tweak the view, the field of view to get how you want it to look. I'm going to put it back to 60 because that was how I wanted it. So that is in essence how to do a view model. It's really not that complicated. Obviously, if you're doing attach points, you can do this via attach points as well. So for example, let's, uh, let me think about how to do this. Let's set up a situation where the other arm is an attach point, it is an attachment. So what we'll do is we'll create a copy of this arm. So I'm just gonna press copy, create a new object. Doesn't need to be a character called left arm. 
and we'll paste and we'll accept. I'm just going to shrink the size of it down just so it's not a huge box. And then we'll put an attach point on the shoulder bit, which we'll call shoulder, let's say. And we'll save that. And then we'll go back to our view model and we'll create an attach point for now. For now, what I'm going to do is put the attach point on this shoulder here. Let's just call it left arm. But I'm going to move it to about there. So that should have the arm be attached at the right distance, I'm hoping. But we can also preview it as well. So what we want to do now is click the preview button. We want to attach the left arm via the shoulder attachment. And we want to automatically attach in game so it's there when we spawn in. There we go. So that should, in theory, be both arms visible in game. One is actually in this model. The other is an attach point bringing in a separate model. So let's save this and have a look. And there we go. You wouldn't know which one was which, you know. You wouldn't know that one was an attach point and one or attachment and one was uh, mm -hmm. native to the model. So, but that's how you do both. Okay, so it's very fairly simple to do attachments or putting it in the view model. Okay. Now I should also talk about what happens if you don't see the model at all. So you go into the game and you just see the first person perspective camera, but you don't see your view model at all. So to simulate that, we could do something like select the whole model and move it. over there perhaps. So if we now save the game, quick play, then it's possible that we might not see anything. Yeah. So you, you might load your game and you might see something like this where you just can't see your view model at all. Now it should be pretty apparent that essentially what's going on is that your view model is just off camera somewhere. It's either above the camera, you know, above you, or it's below you somewhere, or it could be too far to the left, too far to the right, or it could be a combination of both. You know, it could be too high and too far to one side. And the problem is because it's attached to the camera, if you turn, you're not going to suddenly look at it because it's going to turn with you. So it's always going to be too far to the right, too far to the left in relation to the camera of the first person perspective. So if you're struggling with that, then Obviously, the issue is just a case of fine tuning this, moving the model around until you can eventually see it and then get it into position. Um, a way to help with that is to temporarily edit your view model. Because what will happen now is when you go into game, let's just let's just do that. Obviously, what I would normally do is I stretch these all across. So the green, so the um Red would go all the way to the bottom, blue would go all the way to the top, orange would go all the way to the side. And if the arm wasn't against this side, then I would go in the other direction as well. So in other words, you want coming out of all directions, you might even have one going forwards as well. So I could have, let's say, purple coming out this way. Okay. So we have we, we started with a situation where I couldn't see the arm at all. So what I've done is I've added different colored voxels in all of the directions coming off of that model. Okay. So if I now save and view the model in game, I can now see some of the view model. Okay. So that sort of shows me in relation to the orange and the purple, where my camera is and therefore where the arm is. So I can see that the arm is far too to the far too much to the right. And um, the height is fine, but it just needs bringing in you know, more to the left. So it's up to you which process you do, whether it's, you know, building out, because you want to, the more voxels there are in the view model, 
the, the higher the chances are you're going to see some of the model. And as long as you can see some of the model, you'll then work out where your camera is in relation to the model. And then you can start moving it around. You can either do that by adding, as I say, voxels to the model, or you can just keep moving the, the camera around and the arm around. Eventually it will come into view, but don't rotate anything. So let me just um, delete these for a second, go back to where we were. So when I say don't rotate anything, don't change the camera to a different perspective like left and start building the arm off in this direction because although you might end up seeing it, it'll be rotated wrong and you know you still need to be building out in this orientation from the front, but you just need to um, move things around. So in other words, grab this and in this case, move it closer to the camera. You should find that as long as you follow how I showed in this video, starting from the front perspective, building the arm, placing the camera. As you can see, the camera attach point is actually quite close to the arm. It's, it's almost up against the shoulder. In fact, I could move this model forward a, a bit. So, it's, so I'm literally, the camera is literally lined up with the shoulder. The camera is slightly higher than the arm, but you can just, you know, fine tune this stuff by going into the properties of the attach point and just moving the sliders and going back into the game and just seeing what effect it has on the view model. It would be nice if there was a preview button so you didn't have to keep loading the game to see what the view model would look like based on where the camera is. That might be something Justin might want to consider adding and it could be worth suggesting if someone wants to suggest that. If I forget, you could put a suggestion in the Discord for having some sort of preview button in the voxel editor that previews from the camera attach point so you can already see without loading the game where it's going to look and what you're going to see of the view model before you have to load the game. That would be definitely something worth adding in for a quality of life. But for now, you can just go into the game, see where the camera and the model is, come back into the editor, make some adjustments uh, until you're happy with it. So let's just quickly save this one more time and just make sure it's looking good. And there we go. So I'll, I'm going to use that as the view model. So that is how to set up the view model. Now let's talk about how do you equip slash attach a weapon in or an item into a view model. So there's quite a few ways of doing this. So we'll cover uh, all of them. So the first way is if your game is just going to have one weapon and you're always going to be holding it, then you could just build the weapon onto the view model. So for example, I could go to the voxel editor and I could add let the draw voxels thing going. I could add a sword that way. Obviously it's facing the wrong way, but you get the idea. You could build the sword into the hand of the view model and then that way you wouldn't need to worry about equipping it because your game isn't going to equip it you're going to start with a gun in your hand or you're going to start with a sword in your hand whatever so if 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 your view model is always going to only ever have one thing in the hand of the player then you know, one easy thing to do would be to just model it with the uh, object in the view model already and I should mention at this point, and we'll go into this in a bit more detail in a second, but it is possible to have multiple view models. So I could have a model called V model, which I've got at the moment, and this could have a sword in the hand built into the model. I could then create a second version of this model called V model 2, and it could have a gun in the hand or something like that. And then mid game, you can change the view model that is attached to the camera. So you can make it look like you've picked up a gun instead or switched to the gun instead of the sword. But what's actually happening is it's a completely different model, completely different set of arms, completely different weapon in the hand, that sort of thing. So um, there's that. 
Another thing that we could do is we could start with the weapon that we want already attached to this view model. And then the same thing again, you can switch between view models. So you could have V model with a sword attached, and then you could have V model two with a gun attached. And then depending on which V model you trigger in the game, you will see that weapon attached to the hand. However, there is uh, two ways in which we can actually use a single view model and we can change what's at, uh, being held by the view model. So let's start with the simple approach and then we'll talk about the slightly more involved approach. The simple approach is to use the equipment setup. Now, if you're doing a custom setup, it's going to be very much the same process that I'm about to show, but you have to use your own custom names. So whatever you've called your equipment slot IDs, whatever you've called your attach points on your uh, player character and items, etc. So if you want, if you're not fully um, aware of how to do custom equipment properly yet, please do refer to, for example, my guide on uh, setting up equipment, including a cust custom setup, to help fully understand that process, because I'm going to be referring to that process in this video, but not fully showing a custom setup. I'm actually going to use the inbuilt one, because this project doesn't have a custom setup, okay? But it would work very much the same way, but you would just understand the names and things would be different. They would fit your custom setup, okay? So, Let's go over how to equip, for example, a sword into this view model. So let's save the model quickly. So first thing you need is you need a 3D model of your object that's going to be equipped or attached. So in this case, I've got a sword here that I made earlier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an attach point on the handle of the sword, and I'm going to call it right underscore hand so that it uses the inbuilt equipment system to automatically attach both this object to the player model but also to the view model okay because the player character i.e in this case base justin and the view model are two completely different things the two don't automatically talk to one another okay so just equipping the sword onto the player character isn't enough to make it appear on the view model. You have to do that as a separate process. Okay. So this is the easiest way is to put an attachment on your object, give it the same attach point name as what will be on your character. So in this case, right underscore hand, but on your view model as well, you want to create an attach point on the hand. So let's go to create attach point, right underscore hand as well and then what we want to do first of all is quickly preview the right underscore hand attachment with the sword in it we don't want to automatically attach because we want to have the game start without the sword so let's undo that for a second oh why is the sword saying it doesn't have an attach point I didn't save it, that's why. So that's why it attached really weird because it didn't have a right hand attach point. There we go, that's better. I didn't save the sword with the attach point so it didn't attach it properly. So we want to turn this, well first of all I want to scale it. So size wise it makes a bit more sense. It's not a huge sword in the hand of the uh, player and let's rotate it 90 degrees oops that's the offset let's put that back to zero was it minus 2.5 got to remember the number now let's just do it this way that dude uh it was this one i needed to change 90 so we want it to turn that way let's also give it a slight wrong way downward angle like that so it's pointing slightly forward 
Okay, so there's our sword. That's how it should look when it's attached in game. Okay, so with that set up, let's save the vo the vo view model. So what you want to do to first of all have a, uh, a sword or a weapon be automatically attached into the view model using the inbuilt equipment setup is you want to go to your item. So this in this case the sword item. You want to make it equipable. You want to make sure, obviously, in this case, it's a weapon and it has the right tag to go into the uh, equipment slot. And then here are the two important options. So object model character, we want this to be the 3D model. So in other words, our sword model. So that means that when we attack, when we equip this item into the equipment slot, it's going to attach this sword model to the player character. Notice how the character is in brackets. So it's going to attach the sword into the hands of the 3D model. Not the view model, not the first person model, but the 3D player model. Okay. So if you were playing in third person, you would see your character holding the sword. Okay. But for first person, for the view model, what we want to do is also set the sword to attach to the view model. And it's going to use the same names. So as long as the sword has a right underscore hand attach point name, and as long as the view model has a right underscore hand attach point name, then as you equip it to the player, it's also going to equip it to the view model. Okay. So let's save this and test this out in game. So here we are in the game. If I bring down the console and I just quickly give item zero 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 one bring up the inventory I get my mouse back there you go bring up my equipment and now when I equip the sword into the right hand it should appear both on the character but also in the view model like so, okay? So we can see the player now holding the sword, okay? And likewise, when you unequip it, it should also remove it from the view model. So that's the inbuilt automatic way. So you, you use the same names as your custom or default equip setup. So in other words, as long as your equipment setup, whether it's custom or inbuilt, already works with the object and the player model, then you can use the same attach point names as, as you used for the weapon and the player model, but you would give the same attach point name to your view model, and then you just need to make sure that you set the view model to the same 3D object in the item setup, and then it should equip for both, okay, both the 3D model but also the view model, okay? That's one way, and that's sort of the quickest automatic way to do it. The other way to do it, if you want to, if you want to do it slightly more involved, is to not use the view model setting, but instead to use the onequip script and on unequip script events. And you make a script that when you equip this item, it attaches the sword in this case to the view model so you might want to do this for example if you don't want to use the automatic equipment attaching system you want to give your sword a different name to the attach points so rather than calling this right underscore hand i want to call this handle and on the view model i want to have a different name as well so instead of being right underscore hand i'm going to call this um handy let's say right so now it's not going to use the automatic equipment system anymore because the names are different and they need to be those names they need to be right underscore hand in this case in order to automatically work but i don't want to use those for whatever reason in my setup i want to use my own attach point names that are unique to the models so they're relevant in this case you're going to need to do it via script so let's go to the script editor and let's make a new script called equip underscore sword. And for this, we're going to need a single function. 
which is the attach object function. And the first parameter is the object or weapon that you want to attach. So in this case, the sword. The second parameter is the entity upon which the sword or object is going to be attached. So if you were trying to attach it to the player character, you would use the player like it is here. But in this case, we want to attach it to the view model, not the player. So how do you reference the view model? You can either type it into the box site code directly, or you can click the expression builder button and type it up here. You're going to type camera dot view underscore model. And that references the currently assigned view model. And then what we can do is uh, the, the third option is the attach point name on the sword. That's handle. And then in this case, my view model, which is the next uh, box we need to fill in, has a different attach point name to the sword so we need to reference that as well if both the sword and the view model had the same attach point name i.e handle you wouldn't need to fill this in it would automatically know it would automatically find the same attach point name in the view model and assume that's what you want in this box automatically but because i've named them two different things i need to fill in that fourth option okay so we save this script and that means now when this script is run, it's going to attach the sword to the view model via those two attach points. And we may as well quickly make the unequip sword script, which is going to be a detach object function. Same thing again, we want to reference the camera dot view underscore model. And the attach point is the attach point on the camera view model, in this case, handy. So that will then detach whatever is attached to the handy attach point on the view model. Save that. And now we've got these two scripts. We can go back to our item. And on our unequip script, we want to run the equip sword script. And when we unequip this sword, we want to run the unequip sword script. So let's save that and let's see what happens in game. This should look like exactly the same as when we had it working automatically, but it's now working via scripts with different attach point names on the object and the view model. So give item one more time. And Let's bring up the inventory. Try equipping our sword. And there we go. Now, because I gave the sword a different attach point name, you'll notice it's no longer attached to the player character because the sword no longer has a right underscore hand attach point name. So the inbuilt system can no longer use it to equip it to the player. Does that make sense? So in this case, it's broken the preview model but if you're playing you know in first person throughout your entire game then you're never really going to notice that and it's not going to be a huge issue to you because you're only ever going to see this view anyway so as long as it works for one of them whichever one you're using that's fine in this case we want it on the view model so that's again another way that you can attach um, a weapon and obviously if we unequip it it will run the unequip script and therefore detach from the view model the sword model as well okay so the only other thing to really talk about is the camera dot view model um reference okay so if we print camera dot view underscore model let's see what this comes back with it comes back with character v model now that's the name of my view model it's the, the model i called it you know the model with the arm is called v model right so let's just quickly while we're here talking about that let's just go back to the editor quickly 
And let's go to my V model model and let's make a duplicate called V model 2. Again, a character. Let's change the color of the sleeve to red and let's not have a weapon in it. So let's delete the handy attach point. Okay, so we'll save the game and we'll play. So here we are in game. If I quickly just give myself the sword for a second, just so we can re-equip it. So here we are with our V model attach point with the sword attached in it. Okay. However, if I bring down the console, I can type camera dot view underscore model. And I believe I can do equals V model two. And there you go. So that's how you change the view model via script. If you wanted an entirely different view model. Notice that the sleeve is red, but also the sword is gone because there's no attach point on the sword, so it, on the view model, so it loses the sword. And obviously we could put it back. I'm not sure if the sword will be back. No. So you'd have to reattach the sword. Um, I can't attach the sword to V model 2. I'd need an attach point on it in order to do that. But other settings you can do, you can um, print camera dot view model dot attach underscore points that will return the attach points that you have on the current view model so my current view model is my original one that supports the weapon so it has two attach points in it. it's got a camera attach point which is where the camera is looking out of but it's also got the handy attach point which is where the sword would be equipped if um if you wanted to equip something there. So for example, if I do attach object sword camera dot view model um, handle handy, that should put the sword back in our hand. So now if I print camera dot view underscore model dot attachment open and close square brackets and then speech marks handy that's going to show me what model is attached to um, the handy attach point now if you try and do this you will get this error and if you get this error, it just means you can't do it all in one go. So I can't access the camera view model, but also access its attachments. So how do you do this in a script or in this case in the console? So what I need to do is I need to use a local variable. So I'm going to call this VM and this is going to equal camera dot view model. So I'm going to store the view model in the VM local variable. Then I'm going to do um, object one equals dollar vm dot attachment open and close um, brackets open and close speech marks and then handy is the attach point and now if i print dollar object one that will return me the sword okay so just to go over that code again i'm basically saying store in a local variable called vm the camera view model and then object one should be the view model dot attachment handy. So it's the same as typing out the long code above, but this one will actually work. And you see, we get back object sword. So if you wanted to reference the attached object via an attach point, this would be how you would do it. For now, I'm going to leave this video here. I've covered everything that I can think of to cover with view models. So I hope this has helped. If you have any questions, feel free to ask on the discord, but for now, I'll wrap up this video. Thanks for watching.